In this video, we're going to talk about the main value of the shop floor application and how it can provide you information that you need to make better decisions about your business. First off, the main value is you have a system that your floor operators can use to track their operations, the ingredients they consume, the product output, time against workstations and against pay people. So you have a real clear overview of what's really going on with the products that you make and sell. Now, one of the areas where you can keep a real eye on these types of things is that as information is collected and you're tracking things in real time, you can identify trends over time. And trends over time really identify if your products that you're selling, first off, are selling in the first place. And secondly, if they are selling, are they selling at a good profit and healthy profit margin for your company? So this part inside of Katana called Insights provides loads of information where you can track those trends over time. And um, more specifically, Product Insights is a great place to start when you're looking at how you are profitable against the products you sell. Here's your revenue. Here's your profit. Here's your cost of goods sold. Now, cost of goods sold are all of the costs that are incurred against the manufacturing of a product. This includes the expenses to pay your employees, any of the uh, workshop um, hours that are used with the workstations and machinery that you have incur cost per hour, for example, um, as well as the ingredients that are used in the making of the products that you sell. All of those are captured in your cost of goods sold. And of course, an overall profit margin against everything you have sold for any set period of time. I just chose the last 12 months. Now with all of the data that is available here, Katana will show you your top selling products. So what are the most popular? Also, what are your low profitability products? And this is a really great place to start looking for that type of information. You can see that over the last year, these were the products I've sold. These are the ones that have the lowest margins. Even down here at the bottom, you can calculate which are your lowest margins versus which one are your biggest margins. Now, what does all this do is if something's not going right for some particular product, you can start to like peel back the layers of the onion to see really what's going on. If things are going really well for other products, you can maybe use that as a learning tool for making the products that aren't performing as well better, perhaps. You have market influences, which are your, are you priced competitively, too competitively, not competitive enough? Or in other cases, are your costs just simply too high to be profitable with the products that you may or may not be able to sell within your market? All of these types of things come in together, but the main idea is these insights give you that visibility that enable you to make those decisions. A lot of times when you need to make decisions on the fly in real time, it's not always very clear what you have to do. And that's the point of collecting information on the floor level because it's just one step closer toward that clarity. So check out this insight section anytime you need to get information about the product and how much they cost. Now, where do we go with this, for example? Um, there's two locations in Katana where you can start to dig deeper into types of uh, information regarding your manufacturing operations as they specifically relate to the shop floor application. And uh, the first one I'll show you is the completed manufacturing orders that are located on the make screen under the done list. And in this section, you can filter out by any period of time. Maybe you use the insights function to specify last quarter or last year and you want to see more information about the low profitability products that you had. Now, in my example, I only have a limited data set, so I'm going to just give you a just quick overview of where you can look for things if you need help finding information about certain situations within your uh, manufacturing operations based on the examples we've already gone through. So what you could do, you can select all those items. You'll have a bulk action up here. But over here to the right, you'll also have an export list. So anything that you highlight, you can export out into an Excel spreadsheet to give you an overview of anything that you want to dig deeper into. So let's go ahead and choose to export our manufacturing order ingredients list. Now, before I get into the export of this, what are the main questions that we're looking to really understand? What contributes toward cost? What contributes toward low profitability? We want to try and identify trends with the products, for example, that we see, which caused us problems, and then filter out within our spreadsheet, this ingredients list, whenever we're looking for things similar to like overconsumption, for example. Overconsumption is a very easy way to identify 
if you're cutting into your costs. So if you consume more materials on the production of specific products, then this particular export will give you that overview that you need to know for sure. So let's go ahead and do a quick exercise and I'll show you what I mean. So you choose MO ingredients and then in the bottom left, it will generate an export for you, which should be available from the drop down menu here in case you don't see it in the bottom. So I'll get this right there. And this will download for me. I'll pull it over onto my shared screen. All right, so here off to the right, I have an Excel spreadsheet where I've exported this information directly from the done manufacturing order list. Now, what am I looking at is the ingredients, the consumed ingredients list for all of the manufacturing orders that have been completed within the time frame that I've set on my filter, which you'll find here, this filter that has selected from the from the selection menu. And um, when you look at it, uh, hopefully you can see, okay, I'm going to zoom in just a wee bit more so it's more clear. But uh, this is the information. You'll see that for every single line of data, you'll have the one specific ingredient that was used for that manufacturing order. And then you could see the manufacturing order number itself being expressed multiple times here. So a couple examples of where to look. And I'm going to keep it super simple. But uh, let's say that we set up a filter and we want to check out what is the information related to some specific table that we manufactured. And let's go ahead and do that. We manufactured a few of the cognac colored tables, but I'm going to just select the brown dining table and the cognac dining table, which are currently part of this list. And we could apply a filter. Now, generally speaking, if you've got a high volume of different manufacturing orders that made the same products, you could look those up from the uh, filter for the product variant code. You could also look them up through different types of things like the batch number or the product variant itself. So these are all dining room table variants. Um, so I just did it a little bit backwards, but uh, you can also select the variant itself. And um, yeah, going further down this list, you'll see the planned quantity of product, and then you'll see the actual quantity of product. And a lot of the stuff that you want to like kind of keep an eye on are what are the differences? Uh, so if the planned was one, but the actual output was two, why is that? And as we mentioned previously, I was showing this only as an example using the shop floor app, but this is best used in process manufacturing. But another thing is, is also the planned ingredient consumption. So when you scroll further to the right, you'll see uh, the ingredients list that were used on these various manufacturing orders. For example, we have paint and wood, paint and wood, cognac, brown paint and wood that goes to make these tables. And in most of the cases, when I'm looking at my manufacturing, I understand, all right, we have a planned quantity four and four, planned 15 and 15, 15 and 15, etc. And everything looks pretty normal all the way through and through. But then we get to this one and there's something going on. And here is where you see that information. So that information that I previously had mentioned where when Mark was using the shop floor app and he left a note when he recorded the amount of ingredients consumed, then the specific note that corresponds to a certain manufacturing order, you'll see not only a planned quantity of ingredients, but you'll also see a deviation of that, which shows that I consumed 21 meters as opposed to 15 of the planned. And what is the reason behind that? Well, you'll be able to notice that Mark left a comment, accidentally overconsumed by making a bad cup cut, and then a little bit later, he needed to cut out an extra leg. Okay, so what is these? What are these notes meaning for you as a as a manager of your shop floor team? This is costing you a lot of money. If you actually use twenty one pieces and you meant to use fifteen, then you've overconsumed that particular ingredients requirements, and all as a result, it's cost you more money to make that product, thus eating into its profitability. And really what you want to look for with an export like this is anytime your operators have left you notes about the uh, operations that they've done when recording the consumed ingredients. Also, you'd want to notice um, any of the deviations between planned and actual. And that, you know, first off, everybody needs to make sure they're following the instructions when they're doing this process. But secondly, you'll be able to see where problems are starting to occur. And then you might be wondering, okay, well, we have a deviation here, so that gives you an indication of why profitability is minimal. 
for those particular products if you see a trend. And then secondly, you can use these ingredient notes to either A, ask the operator what's going on, or B, uh, figure out if there really is truly a problem with um, either the operator or maybe the workstation. So the next step you would do in this process of investigation is not just only work with what you see here in multiple instances, but you want to attract or you want to um, attend to that problem immediately and directly in order to solve this problem that might be occurring. So, okay, we have a problem with Mark. Is Mark just bad at his job and needs more training? Is the cutting tool messed up? Where did that problem actually occur? It appears that it occurred at a cutting stage based on what Mark said. So what will I do next? I'll go into manufacturing order number 13 and take a closer look at what's really going on here and seeing if we need to make some adjustments. Now, also the most important thing that you can do when you're looking at this is really try to find some trends related to those products that you make. Maybe the product is fine. This could be happening to a variety of products. Maybe it's the operator themselves. Maybe it's the workstation. Now, when we start looking deeper into problems, this is just the ingredients consumption side of things. The next step of that is to maybe look a little closer at uh, the operations side. So on the operations menu, which will be here in the tasks list, you can take a look at the done uh, lists as well for the tasks that were performed. And if, for example, uh, we take a custom date range, we'll just do a much wider, like so. And now we have a full list of completed tasks. You can then take these tasks that you've uh, filtered out and export them into an Excel file as well. When that file becomes available, you can download it from here. And I'll pull it over to my screen as well. And here we go. So pretty much it's the same thing here. You'll have the same list of manufacturing orders, but the difference will be every single line will be equating to a specific operation, one operation per manufacturing order. So the manufacturing orders that these would apply to, you'll see that the uh, manufacturing orders will be listed more than once if the operations, if there was more than one operation per manufacturing order. And in this case, uh, you'll see that there's also an overview of the planned quantity of output and then the actual quantity of output, for example. You'll have the operations that they apply to, and then you'll have a list of who completed those operations. Now, what you want to look for in this area is usually this is important to people like production planners or schedulers, uh, maybe even floor personnel who are kind of more active with the team. And what you want to look at is you can look at things by product, but you can also start to link back the amount of um, time that was spent on a specific operation. So if you have a planned time, which is in this section, and then you have an actual time, which is in this section, where it either exceeds the planned or doesn't exceed the planned, you can identify uh, why that would be occurring. So in certain cases where let's say uh, maybe Mark is spending too much time on an operation, you can see the difference between the plan and the actual output of time. And if Mark is also making a lot of mistakes, then maybe he's just not trained well enough on the operation he's working. Uh, you could also link that back to the specific operation in question, which might be uh, a cutting process. And the cutting process would be linked to a table saw, for example, over here. Now, if you've got multiple table saws, maybe you have five table saws in your workshop, but uh, four of them are always all the time, you know, within spec when it comes to their timing, but one of them is not, and that's the one that Mark works on, you might find out that the blade on it is bad and it's making bad cuts all the time, which is leading to increased ingredient consumption, which is also potentially leading to more time spent on that operation. And at the end of the day, you might find out that it's not Mark's fault, but instead it's actually the drill blade needs to be replaced uh, more often because it's become dull, because maybe it hasn't been updated properly for that workstation. You could also have scenarios where time is taking a lot, like let's say at the packaging table or the assembly table, maybe 
the assembly table is located on one side of your workshop. And when your operator starts the process, it's always falling out of spec. And if it's falling out of spec, you're spending more time on that process. And you might have ways in where you can reduce the amount of time spent on it by, let's say, locating the assembly station next to the packaging location, if they're far apart, for example. So there's a lot of different areas where you can make improvements within your operation. And you can see those little trends appearing here, uh, especially when it comes to plan time versus actual time. So it's a great opportunity to dig in, to really draw the link between your product, your operator, your workstation, the plan time, the actual time, and then coming up with ways in which you can improve certain areas of your business where you identify trends. Even though it's possible to pull a lot of trends out from these exports, uh, currently at its current capacity, Katana is best aimed to help you kind of go deeper into one specific area, figure out what might be happening, and then like testing and tuning as you start to continue working. Now in the future, the insights section of Katana probably will be able to deliver more production efficiency related information so and offer optimization capabilities. But for the moment, currently with these exports, the main goal is to help you find the problem where you find a profitability issue across your organization. And then second, to provide you the actual data where you can do those analyses that help you come to the conclusion to do a next step to iterate better within your business. So I hope you found that this entire tutorial series has been helpful for the shop floor application and also the value that it will bring to your business. And um, Again, if you have questions about these topics, it's always important. Feel free to reach out to our support team. We have a lot of use cases that come from all of our different customers, and uh, they can really kind of help you dig into what it is that you're really trying to get from the shop floor application.